All right, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else who is watching. germs. Watch, germs, yes. Uh, we're going to explain to you the reasons for painful knees, particularly as you age, and we're going to give 10 very helpful wow, tips. Wow, 10? 10. Wow. Not just to nine, but 10 common uh, helpful hints to get you through this pain and get you back moving again. Wait 9.3 seconds. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Okay, here we go. We're looking at Sam. He is more than helpful to help us today. We look at a healthy knee joint, and it'll be white like this if you could... Pop it open and look. It's like it's got Teflon. In yeah, it's very smooth, Ooh, very surface, pristine, right. and glides very, very easily when you walk, run, or move it. But as you age, a uh, few things can happen, and one of the most most common things is arthritis. Arthritis, this cartilage. Good that's, old art. Yep. The cartilage that is smooth and pristine becomes rough, and it may look like maybe a sandpaper or a rust or, or flaking. Yep. And what happens is pain is associated with that, particularly with weight bearing, walking, running, those activities. Uh, so we're going to go through and tell you three uh, common reasons how this comes about in our life as we, as we age. Okay, the first one is more or less more genetic than anything. Uh, maybe not, but it's either we call it genuvarus or genuvelgus. Right. The slang term or the layman's terms is knock knee or, or bow legged. Right. Uh, you know, I, I've got to admit, my daughter has a little bit of genuvarus. She's a little bit bow legged. Uh, she may have some knee problems when she gets in her fifties right. or sixties as a result of it. It could be your hips. Yeah. Or your feet. Yeah, could affect it. And you know, there isn't too much you can do about your genetics. It's right. just you know what you have to live with. So make sure you have good feet in, or good shoes. Shoes. And make sure you watch some of our videos to help you with that. The second thing is if you have a job or you spend a lot of time standing, particularly on hard surfaces, maybe with shoes that don't have cushion to compensate for that. Or a mat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or if you wear improper footwear over time or you wear out your shoes and you continue to wear them for <laughs> many months after right. they should be replaced, yep, things of that exactly. nature. Uh, and then also a very common history of injuries. Yep, if that you've old had, football injury. Yeah, yeah and you, that knee that you banged up playing football or uh, softball on the weekends and the 30 years later, sure enough, it comes back to haunt right. you. So here we go. we got 10 things coming up. Okay, number one, we want to make sure you have full range of motion, and particularly with extension. In other words, straightening your leg All out. All the way. Yep. You can do this in a number of different positions before you get out of bed is a right. good place, or in a seated chair. Bob's going to demonstrate. With the ottoman? Oh. Yep. Ottoman, chair in front of you. So if you're lying down, you're simply going to reach behind your leg here and think about straightening that knee and hold it and straighten it. This is nice. You get some strengthening with it. You can take a cane or a belt and put it around your foot and hold it there. And then I can just kind of relax and let it straighten. And that works out fairly well, too. Actually, so the, the seated is easier. Either way, right? Yeah. You, you got to let gravity do its thing. So you just put it up there and let it go. Yep. Let it stretch. You could put a weight on it or an ice pack. Right. Um, and you can actually tell if your knee needs it by comparing the two. Right. So on this one, it has a slight bend. And so I'm going to work on that one more than I would on this one, which already straightens all the way. Exactly. Okay. Number two, we're going to get right into it, Bob, is flexion or bending it. Because this is something you want to combine typically. Right. Um, so flexion is bending it. When you're lying down, this works good. Probably better in bed, but you can do it in the right. chair. You can do it in the chair, right? Yep. So if this leg goes all the way, and I can almost touch my heel towards my butt, but this one, ah, there's a gap You'll there. You'll follow the difference. Yep. Yeah, then you just reach over and stretch and see if you can get that heel to touch. You can use a little over pressure with the hands and pressure on, pressure off. Ten times is probably the maximum. Bob, you want to show if how you're, you're doing in the chair? chair you want to slide your butt forward just a little bit like this and bring the leg up and same thing pressure on pressure off yep. pressure on pressure off and again if you compare both these you'll feel one tighter than the other usually mm -hmm. yep all right going on to number three 
Okay, this one is one I think is looked over by a right. lot of lay people is you want to check your kneecap and see that it's, mobi it's mobility is good. In all directions. Yep. So it works best if you actually expose your legs. So you probably don't want to do this one out in public. Uh, I, I hate to do it. Bob and I discussed I have a better looking leg, I guess. That's he why does. I, I have to do it. He does. So look at this kneecap. We'll need a close... Uh, Close up of this. Close up, right. This is easy to do, and you can do this with a healthy kneecap, and it's not, you know, it's one of those things you can do either way. Make sure this muscle's relaxed. Exactly. So relax the leg so it's down on the floor. This is a little high. I normally do it in that chair, but this is okay. Right. And look at that kneecap go back and back forth. Back and forth, right. That's a healthy movement. You don't want to compare one knee to the other. If you've got a sore knee, the sore knee may not have the same movement as. The other knee, but, you know, like mine are both good. They're, they're about the same, so I'm happy. And then you go up and down, and this is probably the direction it may be limited, but not always. Quite often, it's limited going that way, right? right. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yep, yep. It's tight on the outside. Yep, that, that's why they, they have that lateral release procedure. Right, yeah, exactly. Yep, I forgot about that. Good. And then you can also work some angles. And you could just kind of mobilize your kneecap for, you know, 20, 30 seconds, and if it's good... Because you can get arthritis under the kneecap. Absolutely. We want to get that in motion. Okay, we're going to the next one. Oh, Brian. So this one works re really well in the chair, Brian. Sure. So very simple. You're going to straighten your knee, tighten the quadricep, hold for 10 seconds, and then relax. Right. And, and actually, I, I think... If it's tight motion you want, you could don't even have to hold that right. long. So it's just an but option. That's what I have my mom do. Yep. You go back and forth like this. This is a good one if you get up and your knees hurt. Right. When you first Perfect walk. one. Yep. That's what she does. Do 10 of them before you get up and walk around. Get that synovial fluid motion going. If you happen to be lying down on the couch, you can do it like this. And uh, that's okay, too. A lot of people are so sitting. synovial fluid is a natural oil mm. on your knee. Yeah, and in your knee, and this say. gets it moving before you get and moving. Makes it manufactured. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, going to the next one. The next one is hamstring flexibility. If your hamstrings are loose or if they're tight, I should say, it may be part of the problem. So we want to do it. It's an easy stretch. It's kind of similar to exercise than one. Exactly right. Yeah. You want to show it in a sure. seated position? You just, again, use gravity, and you can lean forward. Yep. Keeping your back straight, I want you to move forward like this. Not much. It doesn't take much. It, you'll feel those oh, muscles. Oh, I'm feeling bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to hold it for 15 or 30 seconds or stretch forward and back like Bob was doing 10 repetitions. Oh. You feel that, yeah. hands? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, if you want to do it in lying down and on the couch or on the bed, if you take a belt like this and you loop it, put that around your foot, and I'm going to hold on to that, straighten the knee out, and then pull up. Oh, yeah. Feel those muscles from the knee all the way down in the here. Hola. Hola. This one's hard to hold for 15 to 30 seconds because your arms get tired. Right. I, I'd, you know, I personally like to, if I'm doing this one, I'll hold and relax. Hold and relax. Okay, going to the next one. Okay, Brad, the first way is we're going to stretch the calf, right? Yep, heel cord stretch, calf stretch. So you can do it actively. You could just pull your toes mm -hmm. toward your knees. Yep, so go up and down a little bit so they get that. Yep. And this you do want to hold up, getting a stretch back here. Right. Now, you can use a cane. Oh, there you go. You can actually hook it on the forefoot and bring it. That works quite well, Brad. Yeah. You need to do it with your shoes on. If you do a barefoot or stocking, it doesn't hook with the cane. And you can also take a belt. Yep, absolutely. Get a little leverage. Um, Same thing on the uh, forefoot. And give it a good yank. <laughs> and standing, if you feel comfortable with this, this works very easy. It's been around forever. Is the wall stretch where you lean up against the wall. This is the heel cord getting stretched, not this one. And I lean forward, keep the heel glued to the floor, and hold that, you know, 15, 
30 seconds if you want to be long or stretch on, stretch so off. So this muscle does cross the knee. Yes. Uh, the yep. calf muscle. Especially when the knee is straight. Right. You know, if you happen to have an incline board, these work really well, but they do, you don't need one, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so that's the calf muscle and uh, the ankle stretch that direction. We're going to go to the next one. Okay, this next one, you do need to have to purchase a product, and that is the uh, Fit Glide. It's a very nice product, particularly if you're having problems walking uh, because your knee pain is so bad, and you want to keep them moving, either in seated or, or in bed. Or in bed, which is. And it only weighs five pounds. Right, it's, it's very light, and very durable. Uh, you, could, you could put it on your couch as well. I think this is cool, Brad. Yeah, and watch my knees. I'm just going to, it easily glides. Yep. You cannot do this in it's your bed really any other way because right. you can't slide your heels It's like he's it. running in bed. Yep. They also get hip motion as well and, you know, a little bit of ankle, but mostly knees and the hip. Uh, it also works very well. You can hand it over to me. Yep, in the chair. All right, so in the chair it works really well as well. See Bob's moving back and forth, getting those knees moving. And you do this for couple minutes, you're going to feel some exercise right. as but well. But the nice feature is, Brad, the handle. Yep. It actually yep. works as a stand. Yep. And now I'm getting the, the quadricep muscle. Right. And it just makes it easier, particularly if your ankles are a little stiff too. Right. It makes it easier to work the knees and this. And, and then we can also work the hamstring. And this really works the hamstring quite well. More than you anticipate. Yeah, it does. When we first start doing this, we thought, well, that's no big deal. A little bit surprised, right. Yeah. You do it for a couple minutes, and you feel those muscles start to burn a little. All right. We're going to go on to the next number. All right. We're on number nine already, Bob. We're going to talk about if your knee joint responds well to heat. This is a good option. You can use a standard hot pack. That works well. Uh, far infrared hot packs like this one go much deeper. Right. Uh, they, it's... The other way is only skin deep. Right. This is 2.36 inches. And when you wrap it around the knee, it goes 2.3 inches on each side of the knee. So you're getting a complete... Uh, All the way through yep, the joint. Yep, that thermal uh, benefits are going to really come in. And Bob has actually got this wrapped on, so you, you can see it there. Uh, the only thing about these is they're expensive. Right, so very you're, expensive. You're not going to buy one unless you know your knee responds very well to heat and you're going to use it long term. Or you're going to use it on your back and your shoulder. Right, yeah, because this, this pad does work well. Knee, ankle, hip. Back, well, on so back, right. pretty much all over, yeah. Uh, so that is an option for you that can be very beneficial. And we're going to come up with number ten. We'll just go right into it, Bob. Sure. You want to keep those knees moving in a non-weight bearing uh, activity, like a stationary bike. Right. I uh, get on there and pedal away. We don't have one to demonstrate, but everyone well, knows. Well, thick would also work for that. Exactly right. right. Even a good one, which is not very uh, accessible, is pool therapy. Right. Get it in the water. Yep. Uh, so if that's an option, take advantage of it. Uh, most people do not have that availability, but it is a really good way to work it. All right. So you're getting older. Your knees are starting to hurt. There, I'm sure there's at least four or five options you can do with these throughout the day. Gotcha. Your knees will get better if you keep them moving. Remember, motion is lotion, Bob. Right. Got it. But there's something more important. We can solve just about anything. We can fix oh, about that's anything. right, except for? A broken heart. A broken, what are you doing there? I'm doing this, and it's broken. What the hell is this? <laughs> it's broken. What is? The heart. Where's the, oh, there it is. I get it. Yeah, I'm a little slow. Be oh careful. 